Hello, my name is Vesela Ensberg, and today I would like to tell you about our project on researchers' profiles and how it expanded our collaborations and thinking beyond the library and beyond the university. Our vision for researchers' profiles is that it will integrate silo data within the university and power a number of applications on campus. We also want to go beyond the university and link to external data through universal identifiers. Just so that we're on the same page, uh, we'll define researcher profiles as a platform or a point of access and discovery of professional information about UC Davis researchers. You may have already seen the OCLC report on research information management in the US that came out, uh, came out in November. Uh, in it, it describes many different flavors of such systems. Even during the exploration phase, we were able to form co a collaboration with the Office of Research, a couple of IT departments on campus, and the Office of Global Affairs in order to understand what tools are available to power researcher profiles. We also discovered many instances on campus in which other units and entities were interested in establishing exactly what the scholarship output of the university is. Upon the conclusion of the exploration, the provost charged the library with building out a platform like that. And so entering the pilot phase, we are collaborating with the Office of Research and with a faculty advisory board that is instrumental in helping us determine what functionalities to build out in order to be useful to faculty. Our platform has two major use cases. One is expertise discovery for collaboration. And the second one is data reuse in different applications. So if this sounds like we're making the data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, that is exactly what we're doing. And since before this, I worked in research data management, I was particularly excited to see the concept of FAIR appearing in this project as well. So going back to this depiction of our vision, the integrator is dubbed Aggie Experts. Aggie is the mascot of UC Davis, and it is the platform that will integrate the silo data at the university and connect it to universal identifiers. So how are we doing this? We are able to pull grants data from the university's financial warehouse. We are getting IAM feeds that bring in information about the faculty affiliation, as well as any preferred names they have indicated and additional titles, such as them being chairs of departments. The California Digital Library subscribes to Digital Sciences Tool Elements, which harvest publications of UC Davis researchers in support of the UC-wide open access policy. So we receive metadata on publications, and in a number of cases, we're also able to receive ORCID IDs from that data. We made one concession to manual data entry, and we have collected bios and websites from university websites to add uh, into the startup profiles. Because we want to keep the number of editing interfaces that faculty encounter to a minimum, we are adding the manual data into Elements. We're also going to license the grants module in Elements and we'll add our grants data in there as well. So this is the flow of data in, into and out of the platform. These are our three data sources. The data from them are described through the Vivo schema, 
and ingest it into Fuseki databases. We have two of those. We're cognizant that the faculty would want to have a say in how they're presented in a uh, public setting. And therefore, we want to make sure that there are visibility controls over all the data that are going to be shown in the public application. Currently, visibility controls exist in elements and in the identity management system. Once we license the grants module, the grants are also going to be under those visibility controls. Currently, the, the public and the private databases are linked, but once the grants data are ingested into elements, this link will be severed. You will also notice that we require authentication for using or looking at the data in the public database. That is because we want to ensure that we have sufficient data comprehensiveness before we make um, the platform public. Once we are satisfied, we will remove this barrier and uh, we will hope to power multiple public applications such as departmental websites. Now, we realize that faculty may still want to have the entire data set available for them for ingest into internal applications. And therefore, we're going to continue maintaining the private link database with the, uh, with the entire data set. These functionalities have allowed us to expand our collaborations within the university. I already mentioned that the Office of Research is interested in collaboration finding and global affairs are interested in the data we have in IE experts. Academic affairs maintain a database that faculty use and currently the database, the, the data entry into the database is mostly manual. Being able to ingest data from Aggie experts will greatly reduce the administrative load on faculty and staff that support them. So this has been a very exciting collaboration for, for us. We're also looking forward to working with uh, the college's IT. We are developing web components that they will be able to add to their departmental websites and pull data directly from Aggie experts. As we're thinking beyond the university uh, data, we understand the importance of using universal identifiers. So we already get DOIs for the publication data, and in some cases, we're able to get ORCID IDs. ORCID IDs are particularly important to us because they allow us to create a path for auto-updating publications. And one of the greatest challenges for platforms like this are to be able to maintain the currency of the data. Going forward, we would like to enrich our grants metadata and we would like to better describe our university's hierarchy. And for that, we're looking towards the research organization registry, ROAR, and we're hoping to use ROAR departmental identifiers. Now, if you're following the development of ROAR, you're probably wondering when they started minting departmental identifiers. They haven't. Uh, we just really, really want them to. And here's why. Our university, and I'm sure many other universities, have non-departmental units, such as institutes and centers that have faculty affiliated with them. However, because those centers do not issue salaries, HR, the HR feed does not contain any data on the affiliation. So we could potentially be the stewards of that information. However, as we develop it, we would like to be using universal identifiers rather than creating yet another set of local ones. So we would very much like to see an open identifier registry such as ROAR be expanded to serve that need. We were connected to like-minded uh, people 
Uh, in particular, I'd like to mention Carolyn and Arthur, and we were joined by others who are also interested in solving the same problem. I encourage you to take a look at the presentation that Quinn, Arthur, and, Mar uh, and uh, Carolyn presented at the last PID Palooza, in which we uh, describe the proposal. It involves creating an extra metadata field in the ROAR schema. That field would contain a pointer to a file that would describe the organization's hierarchy and the suffixes that would expand the ROAR identifier. Around the same time that we were exploring ways to leverage ROAR, the Content Support Services Directorate, led by Xiaoli Li, uh, was being uh, was participating in the program for cooperative cataloging. Quinn joined TJ Cao in a pilot in which one of the colleges at UC Davis was described through data structures in Wikidata. And that pilot was successful and very exciting to us because it created a proof of concept. Um, now, there are, of course, concerns about who has access to editing information like that. And so the problem is not fully solved, but it certainly is a major step forward. And this is how our researcher profiles took us from cyber data all the way to Wikidata. When we're thinking about expanding our horizons, we're also thinking about enriching the grants metadata. This is one of our long-term goals. Whenever we do usability testing for, uh, with our researchers, they, they share with us that they want to know the current projects on which their potential collaborators are working. As you know, publications reflect completed projects. Therefore, active collaborations are essentially the only source of current information on existing projects. We would like to be able to bring in abstract text and keywords from federal funders. And of course, as we are designing or thinking about the process of doing that, we will be incorporating fund draft IDs for funders. So by now you're probably wondering what Aggie Experts looks like. And this is our current homepage. Remember that this is a pilot project. So currently we only have about four departments and we're still working on the comprehensiveness of the data that are ingested in it. This is an example of a researcher profile's landing page in which the research areas are drawn from publication keywords. We display titles, websites, ORCID IDs, followed by lists of a list of publications and a list of grants. So what is next for us? Internally, in the short and probably medium term, we'll be looking at boosting the comprehensiveness of the data we currently include in the platform. We also would like to fine tune our search to do better collaboration discovery. There isn't much known about the way collaborations are started online. And so we would like to find out more and provide uh, a better service that way. We will be adding new data sources such as courses and patents, and we're looking forward to scaling up beyond one college on our campus. Long term, we would like to be able to reflect the complex organizational structure of our university, and we would like to enrich the grants metadata. I have been recognizing our collaborators as I went through this presentation, and I would like to use this slide to recognize the people who are doing the development and um, expansion of the researcher profiles. 
online strategy and digital applications in the library, and also the people who are contributing to improving our search uh, algorithms for publications, the publication data quality, and um, are contributing to discussions of licensing and, um, and policy around the platform. So if you would like to talk to us about our project, please reach out. We'll be happy to discuss that project and expand our horizons. Thank you.